I'm Gordon Wheeler. I'm the president of Esalen Institute in Big Sur in Monterey County. And I'm here to talk about Esalen. It's kind of been around forever. It's one of the oldest businesses in the county now, 50 years old next year. At the end of this year, we start celebrating our 50th year season. And it's actually 100 years that the property of Esalen, this incredible coastal property down 10 miles south of Big Sur Valley, has been in the family of Michael Murphy, our founder. Dr. Henry Murphy of Salinas, hospital owner, uh, prominent physician over there in the turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, <laughs> bought the property uh, in 1910. It was the home of legendary hot springs baths that had been in use there for well, for 6,000 years that we know of from archaeological middens and remains on the property. So it's been dated back at least that far. And those springs undoubtedly were very much like Sykes Hot Springs and others in the county that have just been hollowed out in the site where they bubble out of a hillside by people with their hands and putting in some stones and making a little bath. That must have been the, the way they were for the Indians. After the Spanish were here, and then in the settler pioneer times in the 19th century, they began to be used for their legendary properties of curing arthritis. And through that reputation, they came into the hands of Dr. Murphy 100 years ago, who wanted to open a healing spa there. But there was no road. He thought there soon would be a road down there. But along came World War I and interrupted that. And in the 20s, the road began to be resumed. And as the 30s went on, then there was the Depression. There kept being delays. WPA extended the road all the way down, finally to Esalen in about 1935. And Dr. Murray moved down there, built a beautiful big home, and began developing that property for hot springs. And then came World War II. And blackout over the whole co coast, uh, out of fears of invasion, and of course, no further commercial development. So the property languished for a while until Michael Murphy, Dr. Murphy's grandson, and his uh, young cohort, Dick Price, both of them had been to Stanford, had tried graduate school in philosophy and psychology, and found that, now this is the end of the 50s, the Eisenhower years, nothing they were interested in was being pursued in philosophy or psychology, two of the major areas where Esalen has made an impact in the last 50 years on our whole world culture, those two areas in particular. Michael had been in India. He was interested in the integral development of the whole person, the spiritual side. You couldn't talk about that in philosophy in those days, or in psychology for that matter. It was all analytic psychology, logical positivism, I mean, philosophy and psychology was running rats in mazes. So the mind-body connection hadn't been developed and researched yet. Bringing Eastern meditation practices and yoga to the West, that was in its infancy. Developing what we know now today as somatics, which is putting all these different kinds of personal physical development together with your emotional development. That didn't exist. We didn't uh, have the idea of experiential education, hands-on. Education was very classroom and rigid. That was yet to be developed. We had some seeds of it in the progressive education movement, John Dewey earlier in the century, but it had languished. And all of these different things that these two young thinkers wanted to explore, they were in their late 20s, weren't being done in the universities and the research institutes. So that's what they opened Esalen for in 1962, which was, in their words, to open a platform for everything excluded or marginalized from the mainstream academic institutions and research institutes. And 
So they thought, but you got to remember that experiential education, workshop education, this idea of retreats, people coming somewhere to learn something just on their own, not for university credit maybe, didn't exist in the 1959-61. So that whole market niche also had to be created. Well, they wrote to everybody they wanted to hear from, people like Buckminster Fuller, Timothy Leary, some wild men, but also major futuristic thinkers like Arnold Toynbee, and, and then also meditation people like Alan Watts, and Aldous Huxley spoke there. He was one of their main inspirations. They wrote to all these people in the early 60s and to see if they would come, and they all, as Michael always tells it, they all said yes. <laughs> So then they thought, well, they put out a little catalog. They got people there for these workshops. People were fascinated by it. They came down to Esalen. They stayed in what in those days were pretty rudimentary accommodations. We're doing a lot better today. And they gathered, but then what are they going to do? Because they didn't come really for just a lecture or just a university experience. They came for something more holistic, more whole person than that, something that would put perhaps the emotions together with new thought, or perhaps some kind of embodiment together with spiritual practices, always crossing these boundaries. And that's how experiential workshop education really flourished. And the whole idea that you would continue your education all your life, not that it would end at high school or college and you, then you go into a job, and that it would mean developing your mind and your whole personal communication, relations, emotional skills, and depth. People who wanted to do that kind of thing in those days, they were sent to psychotherapy, and that was for people who were a little bit sick or it was pathological. The idea of personal growth distinct from psychotherapy, or positive psychotherapy even, distinct from pathological conditions, none of that existed. That was all pioneered by Esalen. So they launched it, and it was an incredible success from the beginning. Always a bit of a, you know, an outlaw institution down there. Those were the 60s and then the 70s. Those are the days of sex, drugs, drugs, and rock and roll. That's all entered into legend, of course, too. But Esalen kept pushing ahead with the serious side, pushing these frontiers of what is education? What do we need to develop? How do you develop the whole person? What if you've never explored your creativity? What kind of environment could you put yourself into to stretch that part of yourself? And then how would that translate when you got back to your own practice of teaching or in your community or you as a scientist or a business leader? How would that affect you? And people found that they did. Again, ideas that are very mainstream today, but they weren't then. So down through the years, Esalen has kept doing that. We're still doing it today. We probably had a million visitors in that time. We didn't count too closely in the early days. <laughs> we know we have about 17,000 a year nowadays. So 50 years, and there used to be even more, you can see what it adds up to. It's getting up to three quarters of a million, a million people who have been brought, of course, from a pure business standpoint, people who have been brought through Monterey County. They stay in town, they stay in Big Sur, they go out to dinner, as well as staying at Esalen. They spend money, they linger, they get to know the area, they come back. It's been an enormous business resource to the community of Monterey County over these decades as well. So today, Esalen keeps up this, you know, our challenge is always to stay at the edge. Meanwhile, hundreds of other centers have been founded around the world now. Each country that reaches our level of prosperity creates what's called a, a, a demographic of cultural creatives. There's a lot of research on this. Probably 30 to 35 percent of America, American adults, identify with the profile that's known as cultural creatives. This is a cultural segment, it's also a market segment. These are people who are educated, who are, even in today's challenging times, they're not necessarily worried about the next 
paycheck. So they have disposable income and they want to spend it on experiences, not just things. So they come to places where they feel they can have an adventure, an outer sports adventure, or an inner learning adventure, where they can have a new experience. They don't want to just tour a cathedral or an ashram. They want to experience the contemplative or the meditative practice. They don't want to just see traveling sites. They want to get out in it and interact with the people. They want to learn how they can give more service. They want to, uh, to increase the, the intensity and the satisfaction of their own lives and also develop more to give and share around them, their family, their communities, their, uh, and their workplaces. That's what we're there for. And by definition, that edge keeps moving. The more Esalen is, I wouldn't say copied, because each of these centers is different and distinct, but many of them have been founded very consciously in the inspiration of Esalen around the world, other learning centers. And others nowadays, we've been there so long, they're just founded in that atmosphere, in that space. And we have networks of these different centers that we don't really regard ourselves as competitors. We all have our own little bit different niche and emphases. So with so many of them in the world, as fast as we pioneer something, or perhaps they do, then it's everywhere and we're interested in pushing it to the next step. That's how, for instance, something familiar to everybody in the last 30 years, but not before that, is what we call complementary medicine, where you take mainstream Western medicine with all the technology and all the drugs and every, all the miracles that can accomplish. And you put it together with health-enhancing practices and other less invasive treatments like acupuncture or uh, different types of body work, which are research-proved now to be very effective in, for a lot of things. Or if you're a cancer patient, for instance, as I am, and millions of uh, Americans are survivors of cancer, We've been, we are used to talking to our doctors about what's the mainstream intervention and what, how do I support that with my nutrition, with my exercise, with my meditation, all the rest of that. That's complementary med uh, medicine and uh, positive health practices. That was pioneered at Esalen with uh, conferences where we invited Dean Ornish and Andy Weil and people like that forward-thinking mainstream health leaders together with traditional healers, alternative healers, other cultures. That's our specialty, taking things that people that ought to be talking to each other and putting them together. Or if you come to take one of our 600 courses a year at Esalen, then that may happen internally. What if I haven't put my leadership studies, my communication skills together with some of my personal affective feeling work. How will that bridge a connection and give me new creative power? That's what Esalen is about. Our particular signature, particular profile at Esalen is captured in the slogan, personal and social transformation. We really believe firmly that those two are inseparable. If you're out there doing change agency work in the world, inner cities and sustainability and in the business world, whatever it may be, come and do your personal work. You'll be so much more effective when you communicate and know how to relate to other people at an even higher level. And if you're on a quest of personal healing, many, many people are at some part of their lives, then come and put it together with the idea of service and that completes that arc. That's the excellent signature on a course. So. Now we're entering our third generation. We feel like we've uh, contributed with uh, many other creative places to creating the toolbox for dealing with the un unprecedented challenges and complexities of today's world, putting that together with the skills and knowledge and those kind of social tools. And now our next generational challenge for young people today is to take that out into the world and give us leadership at the level of complexity that we keep needing and not always getting. That's excellent.